We want the opposition to panic, not us. And that is our mindset. Ah, today's wicket, DXC1, home of NT Cricket, day night game tonight against Caulfield Crammer from Melbourne, there they are warming up, this looks like a proper Darwin wicket, dry, it's a bit used, it's been a few games on it but it feels hard, I think this is going to be a beautiful wicket. Bit of pace, a bit of carry, and nice to bat on. So we've got the lights, day night game tonight. Here it is. We're gonna win, if we win the toss, we're gonna bat, try and get runs on the board. Winner of this game, likely to go through to the final tomorrow. <laughs> G'day legends, I'm a bit red in the cheeks, I've just run about 5k, I did 10 laps of the oval. It is game on out here at DXC1, we are 6 for 161, chasing 208, and I think there's 15 overs to go. So, uh, 14 overs to go, something like that, my eyes are not very good with the fluorescent scoreboard. But it's under runner ball, we've got 4 wickets in hand, we've got a set batter who's on 60 odd, playing Caulfield Grammar. We should go into the final on quotient, even if we lose, but it's a wonderful opportunity for these boys playing under lights. Day-night cricket, in the middle of winter. I keep saying it, but how good is this? Here it is behind me. So many great lessons for these boys. Win, lose, or draw, this is all about development, all about learning, all about experience. You can't buy experience on the shelf. You just have to do it. So getting out here in this sort of pressure, Number eight comes out, we need 50 off 90. He's got to try and bat through with a set batsman. These experiences are amazing for these boys. So here we go. Nice shot, single, good batting. So many similar themes with the ball. Let's just try and run in and be patient. Don't have to try and bowl mystery balls. I think when we just bowl pretty stump to stump, you're in the game. Width is, I don't know what, what you found, Oz, but as soon as you get width, it sort of looks like you can throw your hands at it. So if we go at the stumps, for our innings, I think seven of the eight dismissals, I can turtle is down leg, so that's a straight ball. Seven of the eight are bolder LBW. And every time, they are maybe Sammy. We're trying to play the ball too square. We're trying to go square or sweep, or whatever. And on this wicket, it's sort of skidding on. I think the big lesson for the batters is let's just hit the sweepers straight. That's one thing Noz didn't do. He was able to work it square, but with a full face and really roll it softly as opposed to trying to hit with too much bottom hand. So with the ball, let's just be ultra patient. Ultra patient, try and hit the top of off. And with the bat, let's try and play as straight as we can. And then it's our final day, so we're going to just bring everything we can to the, to the field, to the fielding, all of our energy, regardless of what the scoreboard says. If the scoreboard says none for 150 or nine for 90, we bring energy. We know we've, we're done after tomorrow afternoon. All right, and we go back to the cold weather, indoor training, and that's it. So let's make sure we enjoy it and let's just keep getting around each other. But the support has been excellent. It's a really, really good run chase, that, boys, and 
yeah, those sort of 210s, like, it's not easy. It's not easy. So, great effort. And we can take some momentum into tomorrow. NT will know that they are going to come up against a different side tomorrow. So let's um, let's show them. What's that? Only face one, face Yeah. So let's let's show them what we're capable of. Here we are, fifth and final day. The final day. Got a coffee. Here's today's wicket out at DXC One. Keep saying it. But what a week this has been in the sun. Not a cloud in the sky. There's a little breeze, not too hot. So we played last night's match. We played over here on this wicket, which played beautifully. So that was last night's pitch. Short that side, short out there. And then we're back over here where we played on Tuesday. And it's a shorter boundary on the far side, although they are moving the rope out as I speak make it a bit bigger that side I think but let's take a look at the wicket here it is bit of grass but sort of dead grass it's um it's pretty even coverage I'm no pitch expert I've played a lot of cricket but I'm no pitch expert never know what's gonna happen but it's pretty even there's a little green patch here a little bit greener but it looks even it looks like it'll be a really nice wicket I think we're gonna try and have a bat if we win the toss, get runs on the board. What would you do? Magnificent day for cricket. How you feeling, boys? Played it, playing the NT development team again. This is it. Let's go. All right, boys, just quickly. This today is where we want to be. We spoke about it yesterday. We want to be here for the final. We've done the work to get here. We've done really well to get here. In the middle is what we developed during COVID as like a cricket mentoring mission. I want to see, I want to just hear from you guys what stands out for you in, that, in this, this part here. To develop highly skilled, thoughtful and adaptable cricketers who strive to be their best on and off the field. What stands out for you guys? Highly skilled, yep. What about, why, why does that stand out, Chetty? I couldn't have said it better myself, and that's why I put it up, that I think regardless of the result today, the highly skilled bit, yep, if you wanna be good at cricket, we're trying to help you guys get better with your skills. That's, that's a given. Thoughtful, if you want to be a successful cricketer, you've got to think through situations. You've got to think through the game. And those that can think through situations a little bit better, as Noz did yesterday, realise he didn't have to hit the ball in the air once, they're the ones that become successful. Adaptable, you have to adapt to different conditions, different situations. But the reason I've written that up is this last sentence that Chad's just said, <clears throat> be their best on and off the field. So today, regardless if we go and blow them away, or we get blown away, or anything in between, I want us to be good humans first. Right, we win, we win with humility. We lose, we lose with our heads up, and we stay together. All right, where's no carrying on. You can enjoy each other's success in here, but let's just be good people today. And the cricket will look after itself. Okay, when there's the barbecue on at the end, if we're the winners, or we come second, doesn't make us any more valuable than those guys that finish fifth or sixth. We're all human beings, we're all here doing our best. Okay, so that's the one thing for me is let's be good people today and the cricket will take care of itself. These are the words we said on day one, you guys said, supportive, positive, organized, respectful, fun and energetic. So let's make sure we adhere to our own behaviours, which we've been really, really good at so far this week. You've got nothing to lose today, boys. Nothing to lose. It'll, it'll be nice to win. You'll get to get around each other and it'll be fun. But you're going to have a good evening together regardless. You're going to go home tomorrow or Monday or whenever it is, and life is going to go on whether we win or lose. Right? You're going to have these memories forever. You're going to have these mates for a long time. 
Win or lose, all that we ask is you go and do your best today. Go and do your best, and when you get your chance, just compete hard, compete hard. Want to be the one that, that impacts the game. It went down to a, a super over last year, this final. It'd be interesting and cool if it does again today, something like that. We, we sort of want it to be close for you guys to learn and develop and how to perform in those big moments. And in those big moments, it's the guys that want the ball, that want to be a part of it, that impact the game and that also go on to be great players because they want the big moments. They don't run away from the big moments. So if we're defending and they're eight down and they need to run a ball, you've got to be saying, hit me a catch. Hit me the ball. Not, oh, I want to, I want to go off. Because if that's your mindset when the big moment comes, I can guarantee you're not going to go very far in the game. You've got to want it. You've got to want it. And you've got to be the one that wants to get out there and bat and hit the winning runs. Be the one that's there at the end as Nozzy was yesterday. Right, let's have fun, let's have fun, let's be energetic, let's be respectful. We've been organized pretty much so far, let's be positive and let's be supportive. We stick to those behaviors which we said, nothing to do with our cricket, our skills, and the game will look after itself. Let's go, let's have a good day. On the fur, boys. Boys are going nicely. Three overs to go. Score six for 310. Good running. It's the boys. Great piquet. Fast outfield. Boys have batted beautifully. Don't ask anything more with the bat. What a great effort. We will unpack it properly at the end of Chucky. Well done, Chad. Um, great start. And then Bailey, excellent. Um, stay in excellent. Really good team effort. We'll unpack that properly at the end. I'm sensing, Chad, quite please. I'm sensing there's a bit of this game's done. We've got this. They're not getting 3.30. It takes one bloke to have a good day for you blokes to be walking in here at the end of the day disappointed. All right, so whatever happens, we've got to set high standards. We've got to believe that we can win this, which we do, and not start to think that it's already over. It's going to be come down to execution of skills. All right, bowlers, landing the ball where you want to bowl it. Fielders, executing your skills and being smart with our field pacing. Right, we did a really good job when we played Garrett Rally where we posted a score of having high standards and getting the job done. Let's take that out there now. Right, Freddie and Fuse start us off well as we've done most games. Right, in the field, let's have lots of energy for those first 10 overs. They will get a partnership, it's a really good wicket, it's a fast outfit, they'll have a partnership at some point. What do we do when that happens? Stay up. Don't panic, we stay up, we stay together. Right, but we don't expect this game to be over. Right, if I'm coaching them, I'm walking in right now and go, 3.30, good score, boys, but it takes a few partnerships and we're in this game. It's fast, we, good wicket, fast outfield, we're in this game, boys. So don't think this game is over, one big yet.
Beauty. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, thanks to NT Cricket, to Gab and to Dill, putting on an amazing week. Um, we were only sort of entered this tournament a few weeks ago. Um, but, yeah, couldn't have asked for better facilities, better weather, and a better run tournament. So thanks to the NT Cricket guys. Um, it's so pleasing for me. I grew up in Alice Springs. I played a lot of cricket up here in Darwin, so it was so pleasing to see the NT team do well this week, a really strong group of young players. So all the best to you guys for your national tournament later this year and, and the, your career beyond that. Um, well done to all the other teams. Um, a good effort to come up in the middle of winter and, and perform at your best. Uh, thanks to just echoing what Gav said. Thanks from our point of view to the scorers, to the match managers, to the groundsmen, to the umpires. Um, a special thanks to Kelly, our scorer. A round of applause for our boys. Yeah. Kelly. Yeah. 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 And thanks to a few parents, Ben, Wisey and Maddie, for your help throughout the week. We've had a really good group of boys and um, boys, congratulations. But to everyone, hope everyone got something out of the week and thanks for having us. Just finished breakfast on the Saturday, final day. This weather is magnificent. It's been an awesome week, one of the best parts of this week was seeing this group of boys come together. Seven boys from Sydney, six from Perth, who sort of knew each other but didn't before this trip. And the way they came together on day one was a big part of us playing good cricket. We obviously won the tournament, which is fantastic, but it wasn't about that, as I've said all along. It was about doing their best, and their best was excellent, but they wouldn't have got those results if they didn't come together and form a team. There were no clicks, they just got on beautifully and yeah, great group of young men to be around. Right boys, Saturday we sit here, a week of cricket under our belts. Let's just go to yesterday first because we didn't really debrief or to reflect on yesterday and then we can go to the whole week as a bigger picture. But what do we think about yesterday? Starting really well with the bat. Yep. Yeah, what else? Started well, Abs absolutely, absolutely, what else? We had two people who were like, continued. Yep. We didn't have like starts and then stopped. Yep. We yep. Did we lose wickets in comps? Yep. Which is huge. Matt's spoken a lot this week about momentum. And if we can not let the opposition get momentum, the game stays more yep. on our terms. Yeah, I'd say yesterday was probably our best fielding performance overall. <laughs> oh, sorry, mate. I put you on mute. I thought, hang on, keep, hang on. We're here. We're here. We're here. <laughs> sorry. Right. You good? You got us? Yeah. I shouldn't have put me on mute. Sorry. Yeah. Right. I think yesterday was our best fielding performance. What else about yesterday before we go a bit deeper into the week? I feel like we led up really well as well. Like we all knew what we had to do to get the job done. And like our warm up was good. Like we were on, I thought, from our warm up. Yeah. And so, on that, while we're on that point, if we look at the five days, we were probably off with our preparation on one day, where we had a, some, one person, the only strike of the week, and we had six other blokes sprinting to be on time. And what happened on that day in our performance? Well, not even lost. I said our performance and our result. We were, un we were under par. Under par. And in this game, you only have to be a little bit off to let the opposition in. Now, there's, you're going to be a little bit off many, many days in your career. And the best players are the ones that can still find a way on those days. They're a little bit off. But you want to be a little bit off not from something you can control. Because in the execution of skills, in the, the performance of the sport, there's a lot that goes into getting it right. Whether it's, letting, whether it's running in and letting go of the ball, which has its challenges, or it's, it's reacting to the ball and moving in many sort of different ways, there's a lot that goes into executing your skills. And you guys are highly skilled for your age, still plenty of room for improvement, but you don't, so you're going to be off at times because it's so, it's so difficult what we do. I had Adam Voges on my podcast who averaged 60 in test cricket and he said he could count on one hand the number of times he batted in his whole career where everything just sort of felt 
on or a little bit easy or hit the middle of the bat and everything went where he wanted it to go. The rest of the time, he might have been at 90% or 80% of his best or feeling, but he found a way to score lots and lots of runs across all these formats across his career. But you don't want to be a little bit off from something so simple as rocking up on time, preparing well, because that's all in your control. What happens before the match should be in your control. Now, there'll be things that happen. We don't want to be so rigid in our lead up that if something a little bit at left field happens where it rattles us, we have to be adaptable. We have to be able to adapt and say, right, the bus broke down. We have to get to the ground some other way. You have to be adaptable that something like that happens and you don't go, oh, it throws you out. But when there are things in your control, you want to make sure you're putting the odds in your favor for that day. And that was a good lesson for us all, I think, to the one day we were a bit sloppy in our warm up, in our timing, our performance showed. And the other four days when our, when our preparation was spot on in the morning, we were really good. So let that be a lesson to you. And what I hope happens from here is that we've got three boys at the same club in Perth. There's a couple of you at the same club or school in Sydney, but I hope that there's a ripple effect for you guys and your teams when you go back, that you can take some of these lessons and these behaviors back to where you play your cricket and it can grow for the groups you play with. Right, because you guys are going to be leaders wherever you go back to. You're good cricketers. People are going to look at you guys in the teams. Whether you have the captaincy next to your name or not, you guys are going to be looked at because you're skilled cricketers. And so some of these behaviours and standards we've set this week, hopefully you can start making the norm back at your club, or your school or wherever it is you play cricket. Right, and that's you, you lead by behaviour. You don't really lead through talking. You can talk and you can fire people up. That's, that's a bit, but that's the action, the action that really matters, the being on time, supporting each other. Those little things that is what leadership really is. It's behavior. So being on time is a controllable. And when we were slightly off, it showed. Sammy? Um, like just with batting wise, like you knowing at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Like there's no real need to feel super pressured on like going out there and trying to perform. Because at the end of the day, it's fucking Darwin. And no one really cares if I hit 100 or 20. But, but it's also, that can be taken to anywhere, that mindset, because it's a game. And you're very invested in the game and your family's very invested in the game, but the greater world doesn't change if you score five or 100. And if you can get to a mindset like that, you can play with freedom, which you did this week. So, so many of us are our own worst enemy in that we create this pressure in our head, which creates a physical feeling in our body, which holds us back. And if we can get to a freedom of fuck it, a mindset of fuck it and a feeling of freedom, well, that's how we train. That's how we play. That's where we get close to our best as opposed to performing down here when we're so tense. Because ultimately, that one game, that one innings doesn't matter. You, you ask, look at, ask the Indian cricket team who've just won the T20 World Cup and there's a billion people that are sort of behind them and are like, ask them about a game in Australia five years ago and it's been and gone and they've moved on because the game keeps moving. And I said to the adults yesterday, I think, that, that something I've learned over the years of sort of studying performance is the best players are optimistic. <laughs> And what that means is they always believe that today is going to be their day. They believe it's going to happen. And, but they know that if it doesn't, well, tomorrow's my chance. And they don't have this sort of mindset of it has to be today, which creates a lot of pressure. If you walk out to bank, I've got to do well today. How do you feel? You feel tense. You feel tight. You feel like there's huge consequence to your performance. But if you have a mindset of, well, I'm going to give my best, but if it's not today, tomorrow will be my day. You can play with a lot more freedom, and we want to be playing with freedom, not fear. They're complete opposites, and that sounds like what you were able to get to this week. But the challenge for you and others is walking into a green shield match, which means the world. It's a huge thing, and playing with that same mindset, and realizing that if I get a hundred or a four or a duck, it 
The game moves on, I move on, the world moves on. I go back to school on Monday and we do it all again. Because you've got to be able to let go. You've got to be able to move on and, and try and play with that freedom. I think on Nozzy's point, so many, like when we look at the highest level, or whether it be Big Bash or IPL or international cricket or whatever, generally if you, like, I don't know how many of you sit and watch every ball of a match, but if we watch highlights, what do we see? Batting. Fours and sixes. Right? So we, we, that's what we expect is the norm. But if you actually sit and watch the game and you watch someone score 90 off 60, they might hit 10 boundaries. So what, what does that mean the other 50 balls they've done? They've got a lot of singles and, and twos. And as Noah said, I think that you've always got so much more time than you think, especially in junior cricket, where wickets do often fall in clumps. And when we played well, we didn't let wickets fall in clumps. But what we did well when we played well, whether it was Noz's 80 not out, Chad's 94, Bailey's 95, Chucky's 270s, Steen's 40s, 50 not out in the first game, Turtle's innings the first game, is we just played smart cricket where we managed risk. Right, Chuck probably played a bit of more high risk yesterday, but it, it came off and he played it beautifully. But when we played well and we got to 3.30 yesterday, we've probably only hit the ball in the air four or five times. As Noah said and summarised it really, really well, I think, it was more about minimising dots. Because to me, that's the, the, one of the skills. There's many skills that separate the best from the rest, but one of the skills of the best batters is the ability to get off strike more often. Hit good balls for ones or even twos. Because if I bowl any of you a half volley or a short wide one or whatever, you'll all hit it for four. But who can run the ball down to third man off four stump? Who can drop and run in here and drop and run there? Chatty's first ball, maybe Thursday or yesterday, where he dropped and run? Thursday, yep. <laughs> That's a skill. That's a skill that that's a skill that we're losing in the game with so much T20 cricket of hitting the ball as hard as we can. But I think, yeah, when you reflect on this week, and I hope that you all write some stuff down because you won't remember this conversation in a week. But if you write stuff down, a it deepens the learning in, in your brain. But b you can look back at it, and it'll prompt what it'll prompt your memory. When I was your age and there was no social media, I had books and books of notes trying to learn the game, learn about the game. I'd watch the game, I'd draw cert, an oval and pitch in the middle and I'd be like figuring out where fielders were for types of bowlers, etc. because I wanted to be smart in this game. And I say it to all the young players I coach and I've said it to the parents this week that all of you are skilled and give me two players of equal skill, the player who's the smarter understanding the game and their game, they'll be more successful. What else did we learn from this week? What else did we take out this week, Steve? Pretty similar to what you were saying, but like, when you think about the game and you're really thoughtful with what you're doing, it slows it down, it simplifies it for you. So if like you're ever in a pressure situation or a stressful situation, just like slowing down and thinking about what's actually going on helps you like be clear and makes the game a bit easier. Yep. And I think to add some depth to that is having a plan going into the game helps you come back to that plan but also not just plan A, but understanding that the game's going to evolve and change and you as a middle order batter might come in in five different scenarios. So understanding I've got a plan A, I've got a plan B, I've got a plan C, and when maybe things feel a bit tense, you can just slow down a bit, maybe you're at the non-striker's end or whatever, you get a single get up the other end, you can, you can then think through things a little bit of, yeah, I remember that I just, if this situation, I've got my plan C that I just want to be here at the 42nd over. And that gives you a simple focus rather than when things get complicated, it's when we've got a lot of things going on. So spin, keeping things simple was about bringing it back to one thing to focus on. But it's hard to just make up something in the moment. That's where you need to have an understanding of your game and the game and marry them together and always asking the question, what does the game require of me now? Right, Bailey played a really mature innings yesterday because what did the game require of him? Early, just a bat. Chucky was going really well. We'd got off to a great start and Bailey was able to just, just play his game, get himself in. He hadn't sort of spent a lot of time in the middle at the start of the week, so he was able just to play. That was what the game required of him. 
But I think we did that pretty well most of the week. It was answer, what does the game require of me now? I said to you on, in here on Tuesday that you won't make it further if you play selfishly in terms of you get a run a ball 60 in a T20 and you're chasing 180. Selectors won't see that as doing what the game needs of you. Selectors and people above want to see kids that can adapt to situations and bring their skill set in, in different moments, in different ways. I think a big moment in the week was Chatty's run out of their, the guy that got player of the tournament. And Chatty was the man in that spot in that moment and had the wits about him to pick it up and a little underarm. But that could have been any one of us, but that moment changed that game. When those blokes were going well and he got 100 the next day, he could have gone and got a big score yesterday. So every ball you're in the game as a fielder. And you don't have to have the same level of focus as you do as a batter when you're trying to work out all these things, where's the ball pitching, etc. But you need to be switched on in the field, every ball. Whether it's you're at deep square and the ball gets hit out to deep point, you've got to run in and try and be the backup man or whatever, but you've got to be on every ball. Otherwise you miss those opportunities, you miss those moments that can turn games. And as I said, like, I completely agree. I think we, out, we did outthink our opposition most of the time. Which you give me two skilled teams and the team that's a little bit smarter, can set a little bit better fields, can understand the situation the game. They're going to they're gonna win by a lot in the end because each little bit adds up. So being smart about your angles as bowlers and whatever is the difference between getting hit for a one or hit for a four. And the, the, the flow on effect of that whether you get hit for a four or a one is, is huge. The batter feels good, the bowler feels shit, and what happens next can, can lead to many things. When we have, like, well, when they had big partnerships in panic, and like we backed ourselves to take the wicket, we stayed up in the field, and yeah, it eventually came, we stayed patient. Absolutely, it's, it's, it's pretty rare, especially in junior cricket, that two batters will chase down a score to the end or back to the end. Senior cricket, maybe. Maybe you start playing first grade or second level or, or men's cricket and batters understand the game and their game and they can manage situations better. But in junior cricket especially, it's really rare two batters will get big hundreds. You might have one and another guy chips in, but if you just can stay up and ready for your chance, the chance more often than not does come. Right, so against the Caulfield boys, they were going really well. The chance came for a run out, we, we got the run out. Right, but at that point, I don't know what they put on, 40, 50, 60, 70, whatever it was, and they were batting really well. We stayed up and the chance came. Yesterday, the two NT boys were going well, hitting quite a few boundaries. The chance came, we missed the first one, we got the second one. Right, so just taking that back, especially as a bowling group or you guys want to be captains and leaders that, let's just stay in the game, boys. Let's just stay up and ready for this chance. Because the easy thing to do, especially in junior cricket, is drop your bundle, the chance comes and nope, you panic, and then you don't get another chance. So you're always in the game. The chances do come if you're able to just stick in and stick in, and the bowlers can stay disciplined, and the fielding group can stay up and ready for that moment. I think we also all wanted the best of each other. Like, we weren't all locked up in personal performance. We Huge comment. Yeah. And, and that, to me, is a great thing for a team, and you, that's a thing we want to be able to take back to home, back to the teams we play in, because I think I said this maybe on Tuesday, someone else's success doesn't take away from your success. Noz's 80 on Thursday didn't mean he's a better player than anyone else. He play, it was his day. That was his day. Right? The next day was Bailey's day and, Ch and Chuck's day. Tuesday was Chad's day. Steve's had a couple of good days. So someone else's success, we've got to learn to be happy for them. Because it's not about, oh, they've got had a good day, it means I'm not as good, and we get really insular and frustrated and upset. Because it's a much more enjoyable game if you can actually genuinely enjoy others' success as well. It wasn't my day today, but I'm pumped for Fuse for getting five. Or I'm pumped for Stan for getting 50 or whatever and like we haven't pointed out any of individuals today but each and every one of you have impacted this week and, and have done something for the team at least once at least once many many times 
but it wasn't about individual success, it was about learning and development. But each and every one of you have done some really good things this week. We've got to say goodbye to the turret and the fuse. Good on you, Yaddy. Good on you. Well done, mate. Good work. Good work. Well done, boys.